A lot of mathematics has to deal with recognizing patterns and trying to come up with rules for what we've got going on. Multiplying and dividing with integers is a very good illustration of that. Multiplying, we'll go ahead and kick things off with several multiplication problems that involve just positive numbers. But we'll have a pattern to those multiplication problems, which means that there would be a pattern to the answers. The pattern that we want to set up will eventually allow us to have a single negative number show up in our multiplication problems. So the way that things are working here, 4 times 3, 3 times 3, 2 times 3, 1 times 3, 0 times 3, and that number out front, now that we have our integers, we can now pull in a negative times that positive 3 negative 2 times that 3, negative 3 times 3, negative 4 times 3. The pattern that we see with the answers in those first several lines, our answers decrease by 3 with each of our multiplication problems. 12, 9, 6, 3, 0. That same sort of pattern should continue once we introduce those negative numbers. So from 0, we decrease by 3, means that we're going to get to a negative 3. We decrease by 3 again, negative 6. Decrease by 3 again, negative 9. Decrease by 3 again, negative 12. So what seems to be happening here is that if we have a negative number times a positive number, our answer will be negative, and the rest of that multiplication problem is going to be the traditional sort of multiplying. 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. Well, we can start with that kind of idea and see if we can eventually build a multiplication problem that would have two negative numbers appearing. So to have something with a bit of the same sort of feel, notice that what I've done here is I've taken a positive times a negative. Now again, our rule suggests that having one negative number in our multiplication problem means that our answer is negative. So we're following that sort of rule we're eventually coming up with that front number turning into a negative. The pattern we see with our answers, these answers increase by threes. So when we get down here, zero times negative three is zero. The next answer should be increased by three. Zero, increase it by three, we get three. Increase by three, we get six. Increase by three, we get nine. Increase by three, we get 12. And what we seem to have here is a second rule for multiplying that suggests a negative times a negative would give us a positive answer. This is exactly the case. These are exactly the two rules that we have that control multiplication with negative numbers. A positive times a negative, we could also flip-flop those, negative times a positive, we're going to get a negative answer. A negative times a negative gives us a positive answer. If we take our multiplication problems and rearrange things, we could create division problems. And so if we take our rules for these, we could rearrange them and we could get rules for division. Well, we'll do that in just a minute, but just to hammer away at these rules with a couple of quick examples, 17, times negative 22. We have a positive times a negative, so a very quick note here that we will have a negative answer. So in our answer area, let's go ahead and put that negative in there. The rest of what we have to work out is a traditional multiplication problem, so I can do the 17 times the 22 and work through my steps in order to get that so overall our final answer 17 times negative 22 gives us negative 374 and as a second different example negative 13 times negative 34 in this particular case, negative times a negative gives us a positive answer. So in our answer area, we do not need anything extra. We simply have to work out our traditional multiplication 
in order to get our final answer. So, negative 13 times negative 34 is a positive or just 400 or 40 or 442. Excuse me. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, if we take those sorts of patterns, if we take those rules and rearrange things so that we would create a division problem, we would be able to come up with rules that allow us to take care of dividing with negative numbers, dividing with integers. So without actually showing several problems or the actual rearrangement of things, let me just simply point out the result. Notice towards the top of the screen and towards the bottom of the screen we have a purple rule and we have a red rule. Notice the similarities between them. The purple rule relates to problems that have only one negative number, while the red rule connects to problems that have two negative numbers. So what we can do really is condense these rules that we have for dividing and the rules that we have for multiplying. And we can really say something like this. In multiplying or dividing problems, one negative number will give us a negative answer. Two negative numbers will give us a positive answer. So we can basically take these four rules and condense them down into two. A purple rule that says a positive and a negative put together with either multiplying or dividing will give us a negative answer. Two negative numbers put together with either multiplying or dividing will give us a positive answer. Whichever version of those you like, again to hammer away at the idea here, a couple of examples to work through. Negative 34 divided by 17. That's a negative divided by a positive. So we would be looking at getting a negative answer here. And if we're paying attention to the work that we did moments ago with that multiplication problem at the top, the relationship between 34 and 17, 34 divided by 17 would give us two. In the next example, 64 divided by negative four. Well, our rule says that if we have one negative number in our problem, then we're going to have a negative answer. So the short version of working through this is to come to that conclusion. A positive divided by a negative is a negative answer. And then 64 divided by 4, well, if we needed to work through things, we could do a quick division off to the side. Or if you can do that in your head, wonderful, we get an answer there, negative 16. In the last example, we have a negative 144 divided by a negative 8, a negative divided by a negative, two negative numbers appearing in my problem means that my answer is a positive. So if I take the time to just work through the regular division problem here, I will automatically have that positive answer that I need, which would be uh, 18. So. Again, we can condense those rules to really two statements. In multiplying and dividing, one negative number in our problem means that our answer is negative. Two negative numbers in our problem means our answer is positive.